Hi, it's Hope and welcome to the video. This is going to be a fairly large book haul as there are 14 books that I've hauled in the last like two weeks I think, like two or three weeks. Like there hasn't been that, it hasn't been that long since I posted my last book haul. But I had a book outlet order, a pre-order, and then a few other things come in the mail. So let's just get started. I will say where I got these books. Um, and yeah. But the first book we have is Where I End and You Begin by Preston Norton. And I'm just going to read this. Ezra is an anxious neurotic insomniac who spends his nights questioning his place in the universe and his days obsessing over Imogen, a nerdy girl with a gigantic eyebrows and a heart of gold. For weeks, Ezra has been working up the courage to invite Imogen to prom, but on the only problem is Imogen's protective best friend, Win 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 Winona. Winona has blue hair, jams to 80s rock, and has made a career out of tormenting Ezra for as long as he can remember. Then on the night, then on the night of this total solar eclipse, something strange happens to Ezra and Winona, and they wake up in each other's bodies. Not only, not only that, they begin to random, randomly swapping back and forth every day. Soon, Ezra discovers Winona's huge cross on his, his best friend Holden. With no end to their curse in sight, Ezra makes Winona a proposition. While swapping bodies, he will help her win Holden's heart, but only if she helps him woo Imogen. And that's kind of what I'm going to read. So it's kind of like a, it's a contemporary with a, what would you describe it? Like a fantastical switch of they switch bodies. And I found this very interesting. Like I, when I read that description, I was like, add to cart. And this I got from book outlet the next like eight books would have been from book outlet the next book is emergency contact by mary hk Choi. i don't know if that's how i pronounce the last last name and again just gonna read the back for penny lee high school was was a total non-event her friends were okay her grades were fine and while she somehow landed a boyfriend they never managed to know much about each other. Now Penny is heading to college in Austin, Texas to learn how to become a writer. It's 70, it's 97 miles and a zillion light, year, light years away from everything sh she can't wait to leave behind. Sam stuck, literally, figuratively, emotionally, financially. He works at a cafe and sleeps there too, on a mattress on the floor in the empty storage room upstairs. He knows that this is a god-awful chapter in his life and will serve as an inspiration when he's famous movie director. But right this second, the 17 bucks in his check checking account and his dying laptops are really testing him. When Sam and Penny cross paths, it's less than a neat cute and more of a collision of unbearable awkwardness. Still, they swap numbers and stay in touch via text and soon become dig digitally inseparable, sharing their deepest anxieties and secret dreams without humiliating weirdness of having to, you know, see each other. That's just like... That just like to me screams, I'm going to love it. Next we have Dead Enders by Aaron Salden. And again, going to just read the back. In a place like Gold Fork, sometimes a secret is the only thing that is really yours. Anna, Davis, Eric, and Georgie know the best. Bound together by a horrible tragedy from their past, they forge a friendship that has lasted through high school. In a town full of weekenders, they all know what it's like to be dead enders, fated to stay trapped in a tourist destination for the rest of their lives. But with the appearance of a long lost family members and an arsonist setting the town ablaze, it's time to confront the fact that they bought It's time to confront the fact that what brought them together years ago might be what ultimately tears them apart. Because someone is keeping one last secret, a truth that could change everything. Oh no, this I, like, I don't know, it just sounds interesting, and it was pretty cheap. It was, like, I think under $5. It sounds kind of interesting. Um, the tagline is, keep your friends close 
and your secret secrets closer and I just feel like I'm gonna like it and the next one is uh, the infinite moment of us by Lord Miracle and I will actually hopefully be reading this in the month of May so this one I can kind of explain essentially we follow Ren who has been the perfect the perfect student the perfect daughter and all of that and as gra and as graduation nears she kind of thinks like maybe being the perfect daughter isn't what she wants and then also we have Charlie who has been in love with Ren pretty much all of high school and but Charlie believes that Ren won't like him because of the type of person he is or the type of person that he perceives himself as and it's pretty much just like their cute little romance that's pretty much all I can explain that's the back summed up but I'm super excited for this because it's like a quick play quick pace YA contemporary romance Skyward by Brandon Sanderson this was pretty much this was one of the two books that kind of inspired me to make this book outlet purchase but um I'm just gonna read the back because literally when I say I actually haven't read the description of this I haven't read the description of this like oops Defiant, defi hmm. Defiance is survival. Spencer's world has been under attack for decades. Now pilots are the heroes of what's left of the human race, and becoming one has always been Spencer's dream. But her fate is intertwined with that of her father's, a pilot himself who was killed years ago when he abruptly deserted his team, leaving Spencer's chances of attending flight school at a slim to none. No one will let Spencer forget what her father did. Yet fate works in mysterious ways, and an accidental discovery of a long-forgotten cavern might just provide her with a way to claim the stars. And all I know about this is that it is a sci-fi, Brandon Sanderson. I'm reading my first Brandon Sanderson this month, um, that being uh, The Final Empire. Um, so I'm probably going to put off reading this until I finish that series so I don't have two series by the same author, but I am really wanting to read this because I'm kind of starting to get into sci-fi a little bit. Um, by a little bit I mean I've read like a couple and I've enjoyed them this year. Um, but this is one I really hope I'll like because I've heard only good things about this. The next book is Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman and I know nothing about this really. I follow the author on Twitter and I've heard good things about this and I'm really excited for um, the book all of this villains that um, Christine Lynn Herman is co-writing with Amanda Foodie who is my one of my favorite authors so that's why I wanted to pick up this because I wanted to see kind of how Christine Lynn Herman's um, writing is so I'll know kind of how that book will go but this book The Devouring Grey Branches in stone, daggers and bones, they lock the beast away. That already sounds really good. After the death of her sister, 17-year-old Violet Saunders finds herself dragged to four paths to New York. Violet may be a newcomer, but she soon learns her mother isn't. They belong to one of the revered founding families of the town, where stone bells hang above every doorway and danger lurks in the de depths of the woods. For generation. For generations, Justin Hawthorne's bloodline has protected four paths from the Grey, a lifeless dimension that imprisons a brutal monster. After Justin fails to inherit his family's powers, his mother is determined to keep this humiliation a secret, but Justin can't let go of the future he was promised and the town he swore to protect. Ever since Harper Carlyle lost her hand in, to an accident that left her stranded in the Grey for days, she has vowed revenge to the person who abandoned her, Justin Hawthorne. There are ripples in descent for the four paths, and Harper seizes an opportunity to take down the Hawthorns and change her destiny. To what extent? To what extent? Even she doesn't know yet. The gray is growing stronger each day, and its victims are piling up. When Violet accidentally unleashes the monster, all three must band together with the found with the other founders to unearth the dark truth behind their family's abilities before the gray devours them all. I actually haven't read that description and I got to about halfway through and I was like, I'm sorry, what? Um, that sounds really interesting, just kind of like a YA fantasy. I've heard that this, um, that the kind of town, um, that some people get the kind of vibe of, um, Mystic Falls from the Vampire Diaries and I really like the Vampire Diaries. I need to actually finish the eighth season though. 
Um, <laughs> but I feel like I'll like this. I've heard good things. Uh, next we have Breathe by Sarah Crossan, and this is essentially about we're in a world where oxygen kind of has disappeared and people live in these manufactured domes and you have to pay for air essentially. We have we have Alina who is part of the resistance and they believe that somehow everything can be reversed and then we have Quinn and Bia who are uh, more up in society and they have access to air. When the three of them leave the dome with two days worth of oxygen, everything they believe to be true is kind of shattered. That is a very brief description. I actually filmed an entire thing of me explaining the description and then was like, fuck it, I can say this myself. But this one I, I haven't heard anything about and I'm just praying it's good. I don't know. Next we have Lillian Duncan by Donna Jep... Jep... Jephart? Probably pronouncing that last name wrong. But this is... All I know is it is a, like, queer middle grade. Lily Jo McGrathen, born Timothy McGrathen, is a girl. But being a girl is not so easy when you were born in a boy's body. Especially when you're in 8th grade. Duncan Doferman, birth name Norbert Doferman, is dealing with bipolar disorder and has just moved from New Jersey town called home for the past 13 years. This would be hard enough, but the fact that he's also hiding from a painful secret makes it worse. One summer morning, Lily Jo McGrathen meets Duncan Dor Dor Dorfman and their lives change forever. Queer middle grade where we have a um, transgender main character. Need more queer books. Need. I've never really read we're middle grade to my knowledge. No, I have read one. I've never really read a middle grade that has had a like trans main character. So I'm really excited to read this. And I'm hoping to read this um, in June for kind of Pride Month. I'm planning on trying to read as many queer books as possible. Um, so I, I saw this on Book Outlet and I was like, put it in the cart. I've heard good things and yeah. Next we have The Falling Between Us by Ash Parsons. Um, just eight months ago, 15 year old Roxanne Stewart was stuck in her tiny middle of nowhere hometown with no prospects of leaving. But after her boyfriend Joshua Blackbird, but after her boyfriend Joshua Blackbird posts a performance of an original song on YouTube, he becomes an overnight sensation, catapulting to the Disney, the dizzying, dizzying heights of celebrity. And Rox joins him on the whirlwind ride, ride of a massive national tour. But it's not long before the the never the never blinking eye of fame begins to weigh down on them. The constant hunger of managers, diehard fans who call themselves birdies, record execs, paparazzis, and even family all leeching onto Joshua. Then one day, Joshua Blackbird disappears. Was it a suicide? An accident? Rox will stop at nothing to find out the truth. So it's... I don't know, maybe it's a little bit of like a thriller-ish because what happened, like what happened to Joshua, my camera battery's running, running, like running low, so I'm really gonna try to stop describing this, but I'm excited for this. Uh, next we have uh, Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas, and I'm not explaining this because it is the uh, seventh and final book in the Throne of Glass series, and by the time you reach this point of the series, the description that I will give is so off, but I've read this series, and I love it. This book destroyed me, and I'm trying to, to slowly get the entire series in um, hardcover, which is seemingly hard when you're broke. Uh, next we have, well, I don't have the cover thing, but Along for the Ride by Sarah Dessen, and um, all I know is we have Auden and Eli, and that is literally all I know. I, I'm holding this up, like, it doesn't have a dust jacket. This I got from a, um, like, secondhand book sale that supported my, like, my local mental health, um, like, organization, and I paid $2 for it. That's why I'm not mad it doesn't have a dust jacket. I'm planning on going into this knowing nothing. Literally all I know is the two main characters' names and that's it. But the next two books are the first two books in the All for the Game trilogy, and that being The Fo the Foxhole Port by Nora Sakovic 
and The Raven King by Nora Sakovic, and I'm in a struggle horribly with describing these. Essentially, in the Foxhole part at least, we follow Neil, who joins this team, um, this XE team, which essentially is kind of like lacrosse, but make it more violent, um, at this university, and at first he's hesitant to um, join this university team because it would put him in the spotlight, and he's been on the run for years from his father, who is kind of a bad person, and that's kind of it. It's uh, a kind of like a sports series, and yeah, it's also slightly queer. And I need to get the third book, um, The King's Men ASAP, because I want to do a reread of the series and tab all the shit I love. And the final book is the book that I'm currently reading. By currently reading, I mean I'm going to start in like 10 minutes as soon as I finish filming this, and that is Realm Breaker by Victoria Averett. This is a signed um, Indigo edition, and I really don't know much about it. But like, look at these beautiful like end pages. It's the map. It's so gorgeous. Um, save the world or end it. A strange darkness is growing in the ward. Even Corain, an an Amarat, can feel it. Tucked, st tuck tucked away in her small town on the edge of the sea. Fate knocks at a door in the form of a mythical immortal and a lethal assassin who tell Corain that she is the last of an ancient lineage with the power to save the world from destruction. Because a man who because a man who would burn kingdoms to the ground and is raising an army unlike any seen before, bent on uprooting the foundations of the world, with poison in his heart and a stolen sword in his hand, he'll break the realm itself to claim it, and only Corain can stop him. Alongside an unlikely group of reluctant allies, Crane finds herself on a desperate journey to complete an impossible task, with the un with untold magic seeing in her heart and in her seeing in her blood and the fate of the world on her shoulders. I am so excited to start this. I'm literally going to start this as soon as I'm finished. And like, I love the Red Queen series by Victoria Aviar, and I've heard great things about this. So I'm so excited. I'm so excited to read this. So that right there was a book haul. It's probably over 20 minutes long and I don't care. Um, let me know if you've read any of these books and what are your thoughts on them. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video and bye!